Hello again everyone and welcome to my next video. In today's episode I will be profiling for you the rabbis of the RCC, the Rabbinical Council of California, and specifically its ringleaders Avram Union, Gershon Bess, and Nochem Sauer. In many ways this topic is the axle upon which the entire Mayor Kin channel rotates due to the fact that the RCC was the key instigator in falsifying facts about me and my divorce. Now, as you know, <clears throat> although the content in my channel is geared towards the broader agenda of tackling rabbinic corruption, I do refer to my own case periodically because it is so unique in the sense that I have followed halacha 100% and Lana Rabag Kin has not. I remained publicly silent about the RCC for more than 10 years since it was my hope all along that through the use of back channels they might be informed of their grave errors and come to retract their positions. To my dismay, however, they have brazenly upheld their stance right up until today. So therefore, I felt that now is the time for me to respond to the blatant lies and distortions directed against me by this corrupt organization and to clarify the facts in order to educate the public about them. I am not the only one who has been targeted by the RCC, of course, as they have been involved in multiple scandals affecting other people, but my hope is that if you can see the rabbinic corruption in a case such as mine, then you might be able to see it in others as well. The reason why I started this channel in the first place is for the express purpose of alerting the public to not let themselves fall as easy prey to unsavory besdens like the RCC and other so-called askins. I have clarified before in my other videos that it is a mitzvah to reveal the names of fake and phony rabbis who have chronically violated halachas related to divorce, thereby perpetrating gross violations of the Torah. And you can find links below from the Talmud and sages that validate this concept. You can see more examples of how I go after rogue rabbis in my previous videos, such as the titles Mendel Epstein, the notorious rabbinic gangster, and Herschel Schachter, the coercion director. If you appreciate this sort of content, please give a thumbs up to this video and subscribe to this channel. Make no mistake, in matters of divorce, we are dealing with sins such as Aishas Ish and Malbim Pnei Haver Barabim, both of which carry serious penalties in this world and the next. But unfortunately, most Bhatti Din today violate these halachas, some more than others, and yet we don't see anyone protesting their actions, which is absolutely required if we are to preserve the Jewish pedigree and keep Am Yisrael free of Mamzerim. The messages you hear in all of my videos are not just my opinions, but rather they are based upon the opinions of the great sages of Gemara, Rishonim and Achronim. So let me begin today's profile with a parable. There was once a young couple who just had their first baby boy, and as any couple would do, they prepared him for the Pidyon Haben ceremony, the redemption of the firstborn. But they needed to choose a Kohen for the event and ran into a dilemma. You see, they wanted to use their own rabbi as the Kohen, but rumors had been circling around the community for a long time that the rabbi was not really a Kohen, or at least not verifiably so. Unsure of what to do, they approached a great posek in another town with this question, who requested several days to research the matter. After a few days had passed, the great posek sent back a report to the couple that he had solved their problem. They would not need to check into the rabbi after all, because they in fact did not need a Kohen, since the mother of the boy was the daughter of a Kohen, which exempted the couple from the mitzvah of Pidyon Aben entirely. In other words, the rabbi's status of being a Kohen was immaterial to the situation at hand. Now I mention this parable to illustrate the point that while Reuven might say A and Shimon might say B, along comes fact C, and removes the premise of the entire discussion. In my research of multiple besans operating around the world, 
I usually hear that the litigant says one thing, the Bezin says another, and the Bezin insists on sticking to their position. But what if I can show you that in many cases, both stances are moot since point C comes along and changes the whole equation? So let me tell you about this point C, which many Bezins overlook and in fact willfully ignore, despite many litigants raising it in their defense. The C stands for civil court, as in litigating in civil courts in violation of halacha. You see, it is undisputed amongst all Paiskim that litigating in civil court is a grave sin. Let me quote to you what the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law, states about this, and which I will link below. Quote, it is forbidden to appear for trial before non-Jewish judges and in their courts of law, even regarding a lawsuit that the non-Jewish judges adjudicate like the Jewish law. Even if the two litigants agree to be tried before them, it is forbidden. And whoever appears for trial before them is considered a wicked person, and it is as though he blasphemed, reproached, and rebelled against the law of Moses. Now the Ramal commentary on this quotes the Maharik and states that a Bezan has the authority to pronounce against him or her a Nidui or the more severe Cherem ban until he or she dismisses the civil litigation proceedings from upon his fellow litigant. Likewise, the Cherem is announced upon anyone who assists or strengthens the hand of the one who goes to civil court. He ends up by stating that a plaintiff who has violated the Allah by going to civil court, who then wishes to return to a bezin for relief of any kind, that we do not pay any attention to him or her, since he has already violated the Torah. <laughs> so let us review this halacha. Number one, it is universally forbidden to litigate against another Jew in civil court as a first option. Number two, those that violate this halacha are subject to nidui and even the harsh cherem for violating this big sin, which the Shulchan Aruch calls raising a hand and rebelling against Moshe Rabbeinu. And three, those that assist such sinners are culpable for the same nidui and cherem. And four, once they violate this and wish to seek relief later on from a bezin, we do not pay them any attention and ignore their petitions. Litigating in civil courts, especially in divorce matters, renders all arguments in a Besden moot. And in fact, the Besden should not only ignore them, but also place a serif against them. Unfortunately, though, our world is upside down today, and the opposite is true. Where the man receives the serif, and the woman who goes to court is paraded in the streets as an aguna, and afforded all the attentions that she can possibly receive. Now, in regards to my own situation with the RCC, which refers again to the three charlatans, Avram Union, Gershon Bess, and Nochem Sauer, before we even begin to discuss the merits of my case, this group of tricksters has ignored the fundamental prohibition of litigating in civil court, and in fact are actively assisting Lana Ralba Kin in her scheme to defame publicly shame and label me as a recalcitrant husband, all the while the facts are unflinchingly to the contrary. Let me quote to you from a page in the RCC website that I have linked for you below, and you might need to hold yourself back from laughing when you hear this. Quote, Our Besden includes some of the most authoritative rabbinical scholars of the greater Los Angeles area with expertise in Allah. They are referring, of course, to Union, Bess, and Sauer. I have just shown you an undisputed and fundamental halacha that everyone knows about, and yet these authoritative rabbinical scholars seem to know a thing or two better than the Shulchan Aruch itself. So today, I will show you just how fake and phony these rabbis are who parade themselves in front of everyone as if they are authoritative rabbinical scholars when at best they are ignoramuses in halacha, and at worst they are wicked evil rabbis who distort the Torah about which Chazal have stated, Torah Ma'ba. 
The RCC, headed by Rosh Harishoyim, Avram Union, has its share of scandals over the years, and I will not go into all of them right now. Suffice it to say that there is much to read about in the links that I have provided for you below, but I will briefly touch upon one divorce case which occurred in 2006 that Avram Union was involved in regarding Haggai and Luna Batsri, a case that ironically was very similar to mine. Haggai claimed that his wife went to civil courts in violation of Allah, all the while refusing to go to Besdin, and ultimately received the head to mayor about him to remarry after Luna was declared a Moredet, a rebellious wife. Union sided with the husband in that case, and here is a quote from the Journal News about the case that I have linked below. Somehow, she believed that she had a better advantage in civil court, said Rabbi Avram Union. She looks like she's stuck, even though she's not. Halacha says you can't litigate in court, Union said, using the Hebrew word for the body of Jewish law. If you're not an Orthodox Jew, I can accept someone saying that they're not going to be bound by Torah, they don't believe in, but if you profess to be a Torah-observing Jew, how can you want it any other way? Now, I am certainly not coming here to judge the merits of that case, but I am going to point out Union's hypocrisy and double standards. That is because Union got involved in my case where Lana Rabakin violated halacha by litigating in civil courts and took one more step against halacha by preventing me from being heard at any Besdin and by having a New York family court issue a gag order prohibiting me from revealing some hair-raising facts about her nefarious computer activities which, if discovered, would have granted me custody of my son. Union was informed of all these facts, having been shown letters from my bezin demonstrating my compliance with halacha, and was even shown proof that a get is waiting for Lana at my bezin in Muncie, New York. If the two cases are so similar, though, why does one man get union support and the woman gets condemned, and yet in the other case he condemns the man? Is Lana any different than Luna? The answer is that the three lunatics of the RCC, Avram Union, Gershon Bess, and Nachum Sauer, follow the money and not the halacha. You see, in the Batsri case, Haggai's father was a prominent rabbi in the Rabbanut at the time, and therefore Haggai's connections were his ticket to union support. That's all there is to it, folks. Nothing else to see here. Now, Allah allows me to choose my own Besdin, and it just so happens that I was living in Muncie at the time, and therefore the Muncie Besdin had jurisdiction in my case, but Union thrusted himself on my case and demanded that I come to the RCC to stand trial, even though Lana was embroiled in civil litigation against me. Now, even though Lana was in violation of the Torah for going to civil courts, and my case was already being handled by a Muncie Besdin, and I had also deposited a get at that Besdin, I still made a conciliatory gesture in March of 2009 by agreeing to appear in front of Rabbi Teichen's Besdin. In fact, you can see my signature on that arbitration agreement linked below. But that offer was flatly refused by Union. This all can be verified by Mr. Mayor Leib Rossman, who took the agreement to Union, but Union nixed it and vowed to continue his punishing acts against me in support of Lana. So we have Union ignoring the prohibition of civil courts, ignoring her gag order which prohibited my free speech even at the RCC Besden, denies me from using Rabbi Teichman's Besden, discredits my Besden in Muncie, and discredits the get which I deposited at that Besden. Union put out a serve on Luna and rolled out the red carpet to Lana. Does this sound to you like an authoritative rabbinical scholar of the greater Los Angeles area with expertise in halacha? Or does it sound to you like a mobster in rabbinic clothing? The reality is that Union is nothing more than mob boss of the RCC, as can be evidenced by the countless restaurant owners who report the RCC applies bully tactics in matter of hashgacha 
in addition to the aforementioned divorce cases. Now, after Union saw that he could not succeed in bullying me, he encouraged another authoritative rabbinical scholar named Yitzchok Adlerstein to come as a witness to civil court in violation of halacha. Not only did he testify against me, another violation of halacha, but he demanded from the judge that she force me to give another get under the penalty of a $500,000 fine. That's right. Half a million dollars. Now let me quote to you what the judge stated in court from a transcript that I have linked below. Quote, And Rabbi Adlerstein, as I recollect, I asked him the direct question, What would you like me to do? And his answer was, Do what the California legislature has refused to do and has not done so far. And secondly, do what the rabbinical courts for thousands of years refused to do, I reminded him that I am a commissioner in the Los Angeles Superior Court. I am not in a rabbinical court, nor am I a legislature. The judge also stated, and I quote, that if this court makes any finding as to the get that can be deemed coercive, and the rabbinical courts would not recognize it. So here we have another authoritative scholar representing the RCC who went to court in violation of halacha, telling the judge to force a get in violation of halacha, all the while adding the grave sin of Chilol Hashem, where the judge herself had to announce that she cannot do what he had asked her to do, because such a get would be invalid under Jewish law. All of this about union is not too surprising after all, since a person's affiliations speak a lot about their character. Besides for the RCC Besden, I am linking below a document showing Union as a member of the RCA, the Rabbinical Council of America. I have stated in my previous video that the RCA has worked together with Mendel Epstein, the gangster rabbi for many years, procuring invalid gittin through the use of brute force. They have also openly supported Aura, another corrupt organization that uses coercive measures in violations of Allah. It is known that anyone that supports violators of halacha are themselves culpable for the same sin. The fact that Union is a member in the RCA which supports get coercion tactics will cause him to employ the same tactics at his own besden, as he has already done with me. As you can see in the link below, in March 2007, Union executed his first illegal serif against me. The signatories on this serif are Avram Union, Nochem Sauer, and Barish Goldenberg. But here's where the story takes an interesting twist, though. Barish Goldenberg was duped by Union into signing this false serif against me, and at a later time, Rabbi Goldenberg, who realized that I was being wrongly victimized, asked that his signature be removed from the serif. And I want to thank Rabbi Goldenberg, Zohar Latoyev, for doing the right thing by asking Union to remove his name from an illegally procured document that was a source of many avarice which he wanted no part of. Now, in an effort to hide this fact from the public, Gerish and Bess openly lied by issuing an email linked below, which stated that the RCC serif was removed because I agreed to go to mediation. My reply email to him called out his lie and from the fact that another serif was placed on me only weeks later, this time without Barish Goldenberg's signature, it only reinforced the lie. Gershon Bess has also supported Aura in their anti torah coercion tactics. He is on record announcing in his shul prior to one of those rallies that it was a mitzvah to protest in front of my parents' home to help an aguna. Bess and Sauer were informed by my brother, Rabbi Eliyahu Kin, about that gag order to which they feigned not knowing anything about, but have still maintained their position against me. In my last video about Herschel Schechter, I indicated that the latest serif of the RCC linked below has the signature of Herschel Schechter and not Barish Goldenberg. The reason for this is after Barish Goldenberg wanted no part of this campaign of lies, and Bess removed the first serif, I proceeded to call Bess to a din Torah for shaming me in public 
in violation of Allah. My Bezdin in Mansi followed protocol and issued best three hasmanas or summonses, and you guessed it, Best did not answer any of them. You see, Gershon Best believes that he is above the law, and you cannot summon His Highness to a Din Torah. So in order to silence me, he had his associate union issue a new retaliatory serif against me. You will see that the date of his new serif linked below was issued only a few days before my Bezin placed a serif on him for not responding to their summonses. You will notice that this new serif has no logo on it. It was sent to me without summonses, and this time with Union Sauer and Schechter signature on it. So I ask you, why does the coward Gershon Bess, hiding behind the scenes, refuse to sign a serif against me? Even better, why couldn't the RCC find a third signatory in Los Angeles, but instead resorted to using a blank form with no Bezden name and got a signature from Herschel Schechter, who's not even part of that Bezden? Might they be relying on his star power alone? And why wasn't the original RCC serif reinstated against me? The answer to all of this is that the latest serif has nothing at all to do with a get but rather is all about Bess's retaliation against me for calling him to a Din Torah. With this type of chicanery, Bess is guilty of violating the Torah precept of Oror Mar Kereyeu Besaser, Cursed is he who smites his neighbor in secret. And lastly, we have Nochum Sauer, who is nothing but a patsy for Union to place his signature upon request without investigating any of the facts of my case. Sauer, too, demonstrates his wickedness by willing to add his signature to a document that is meant to humiliate a person in public without verifying the facts, and to which Chazal state, All of this is proof that the Los Angeles community has enabled a corrupt Bezdin to operate in their midst. These disgraceful and corrupt rabbis have perpetrated countless halachic violations against me in the past 13 years, as well as to many others. What is worse, the Los Angeles rabbis have failed to mention in their sermons an open Gemara in Tractate Shabbos 139a being learnt now in the Dafyomi cycle, that if you see tragedies coming to the world, then go and root out the corrupt rabbis, for they are bringing these tragedies upon you. Many of us are suffering from the health effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, and many others are also suffering financially. In a time when we desperately require spiritual solace, our leaders are refusing to step up to the plate and talk about this Gemara, because it mostly points a finger at themselves but instead will pontificate in all sorts of nonsensical directions as to the causes of COVID-19. In fact, I will link a YouTube video link at the end of this video that shows you how Avram Union explains COVID-19. Be sure not to miss it and see just how pathetic that message is to explain a pandemic of this magnitude. If the video is not viewable, then you will know for certain that he took it down if only to save himself the embarrassment. We are living in a time of the footsteps of the Mashiach, where Chazal state that our leaders are comparable to dogs, in the sense that instead of leading us, they look back at their membership and do what their laymen tell them to do. So instead of continuing to support these pretenders and have a share in their sins, I recommend we follow the Gemara in Shabbos 139a and remove these corrupt rabbis from their positions of power. In a time of great mortal danger such as this, we cannot afford to procrastinate. And while what I'm suggesting might sound a bit unconventional to you, this is just the kind of path that the Torah recommends we follow right now. We can heed the Gemara and Shabbos as an explanation for COVID-19, or we can be as sheep led to the slaughters by the trolls at the RCC spewing gibberish and gobbledygook. The choice is ours, and I hope we will choose wisely. Thank you all for watching, and see you again in the next video.